Hello, everyone, and welcome to the 10th episode of this series of tips and tricks for your key fob design. In this episode, we are going to look at, at a different way of creating a split line using the panel gap tool. Uh, previously, we've done that manually. If we look at our buttons here, we can see, uh, let's turn off some shading as well. Uh, we can see, clearly see the split lines right here. And we did that by creating two flanges at an offset distance from each other and then rounding off the edges manually. Now, lucky for us, there is a tool called Panel Gap that does all of that in within one single tool. And we're going to have a quick look at that. Uh, and the split line we're going to work with is the separation between the metal part here and the plastic part right here. And uh, I'm going to start by creating a plane. So I hit surfaces, primitives, plane. And I type in zero space zero space zero to place it. Also, I need to rotate that plane around the x axis. So I hit rotate and 90 space zero space zero go. And if we go to the top view, Hitting in F5, uh, we can scale that plane, make sure it intersects all of our surfaces. Go back to the, this one and make sure we have an intersection. And we do. So I'm going to intersect this plane with my surfaces right there. So I hit intersect and draw a big window around all of the surfaces here. Uh, and you can see now that we have some coaching surfaces right here. Oh, we need to move that as well, don't we? So let's go back to the top view and pick our plane and move it using the right mouse button up to this, the center of the split line. Right there. Now you may notice that our curves and surfaces actually follow the movement since they are connected to our intersection. So if we go back to the perspective view, we can see now that we have a bunch of curves and surfaces in the correct position, roughly anyway. Uh, so we can now get rid of that plane. We don't need that anymore because we have our curves and surfaces right here on our surfaces. I'm going to turn off the canvas as well so we can clearly see what we're doing here. Uh, to create that split line now, we're going to bring up the tool called Panel Gap, and it's hidden under, under uh, Rolled Edge right there, rolled edge and panel gap. And let's also hit the options box there to see what we got. So the first thing we wanna do, if we look at all the different options here, is to define our curve on surface as the center line, the center of the gap. We can do it on, on either side as well, but, but uh, we want this to be our center line. Uh, second is the gap distance, which is, if we look at our manually created uh, split line, basically the distance between the two flanges here. I've set that to one, meaning 0 0.1 once we scale it down. Uh, Next comes the, the rounding off of the edges. Uh, I've set that to circular and 0 0.2 millimeters uh, or two here uh, for the first one. And the second radius is also set to two millimeters. So that takes care of the rounding off. 
and then it's about the flanges, our primary flange, which is one of these, and the secondary one, which is the other one. I set that to 90 degrees, which is a common way of, of doing it, and just one millimeter really short, or 0.1 in our scale. Um, also, down here in control options, we have an option of choosing the automatic trimming of the surfaces. We don't really want that because what happens if you use that is that, for instance, this surface right here will then be trimmed with a gap, but it, this part and this part will be the same surface. And we don't want that since we got different materials here. We got metal here and plastic here, and we want to be able to separate those when we render it. So if we go back to, to our panel gap options, I'm going to set that not to automatic trimming, but to curves on surface. We can then do a manual trimming of the surfaces using trim divide instead, and thus create independent surfaces. So curves on surface, like that. And we can now start picking on our curves on surfaces. Let's turn off that canvas plane again. So I pick that one, that one, this tiny guy here, that one, that one, and the radius, and finally this one right here. And if we're happy with our picking of the split line, we hit accept. We then get two arrows. It can be a bit tricky to to understand but let's just hit build and see what that does nothing okay uh, i'm gonna hit that arrow and hit build and voila here we go uh, if i would have hit oops hit that arrow the flange would have gone the wrong way you see it's pointing upwards now so Let's hit that arrow once more and update it and see what we got. Well, we got the rounding of the edge right here, and we got a tiny little flange going down there, and the same thing on the other side. A flange here and a rounding off, and if we're happy with that, we can just hit next. Now, if we shade this, you can't really see what happened because these surfaces are still untrimmed. So, so we're going to do that manually by using trim, pick the surface, and that part and that part we want to keep but make independent. So I hit divide. Oops. It looks like I got the wrong ones, but I didn't. So if we now shade it and pick this surface right there and delete that one, we can see that we got what we want. And if I now pick this surface, it's independent from this surface right here. I'm going to go ahead and trim all of these surfaces manually. So we go trim, pick that one, and divide. Also, this guy here, and divide. This one, divide. That one, divide. That one, divide. And did I get that one? No. And that will divide. And then we can go ahead and delete that one, that one, that one, that one, that one, and finally that one. And delete. 
think this is what we got now. Let's turn on my shiny shader onto that and toggle the bottom. See what we got. And we got ourselves a pretty nice split line here uh, using the power gap tool. And that concludes this episode. Thank you for watching.